So hi everyone, thank you for attending. My name is Vincent Ferriès. Um, I will showcase some Java 8 refactoring. Uh, I work for a company called Softteam here in Toulouse, and I'm quite involved in many local user groups, the Java user group, and Android user group, and another one called Software Craftsmanship Toulouse. Um, I also speak for food um, quite often, and I also invite people to, to talk at my company. Uh, you can register to Brand Bag Lunch, that's a website. Uh, I'm a registered speaker, you can invite me in your company too. Um, who in the audience uh, already ship some Java 8 code? Okay, uh, who, who is still stuck with Java 8? Uh, seven or six? Okay, many of you. As you should know, Java 7 has reached end of life in April this year. So you shouldn't be use it, using it anymore. Okay? <laughs> Just a reminder. And Java, Java 9 will be out on September 2016. Um, that's pretty much what I saw when I started um, interesting about functional programming. Uh, strange symbols. Um, I don't know if you heard the M word, which, is, which seems monads, or purification, which should be called Chanfinkel. It's the, the, the guy that invented it. That's quite complex. And me, I'm just a, a developer, and I just don't care about, about these words. What I need is what I can apply in my daily work. So enough talk, we will see some code. Here I have Eclipse. So I just have a main method, a main class with a main method, and a runnable that I run in a thread. If I execute that, it simply outputs, oops, excuse me. It simply outputs hello Eclipse con. One of the third thing is called lambdas. It's a replacement of such anonymous classes to a lambda expression. And what is a lambda expression? It's just a bunch of parameters on the left. Here I have no parameter. A neuro sign, a neuro symbol, and then an expression which is executed. Uh, in my case, uh, Eclipse helped me with a cont control one shortcut, which, which is the quick fix, and it proposed that solution. And what if I want to execute more than one line of code? Here again, I can use the, the same shortcut, excuse me, just here, and change the body expression to a block. So now we have curly braces, and the whole block will be executed. I can, oops. Can something, maybe second line, and if, if I execute it again, I got both lines printed out. Okay, pretty simple. But what if I had a project with 2,000 anonymous classes? Um, that's the case here, I got three of them, three action listeners, that's just a, a small swing application. If I run it, I just have three buttons, and if I click the buttons, I get different messages. There is a thing in Eclipse, you go to source, cleanup, and there is a new option there. If you go to configure, here there is a functional interface instances, and you can force the conversion to use lambda expression where possible. If I do that, just that, and click finish, the three action listeners have, have been replaced by lambda expressions, okay? That's a nice thing if, if you have big projects and want to migrate quickly. Mm. Okay. So your boss come, to, come into your office and ask you to, to write a service that takes uh, invoices as input 
and make some filtering on these invoices. Here, he asks for uh, the invoices cor corresponding to a particular client, namely Eclipse Foundation. So if I just check the invoice class, we got a private string client and just an amount. Okay, that's just a POJO, nothing really fancy. Okay, so basically I iterate over my invoices. Uh, if the client equals Eclipse Foundation, I add them to a filtered list and return that filtered list. Okay, quite simple. And then uh, another client sees that functionality and just wants the same. So what you will do in such a case, you will pass the client as a parameter, okay, and you check that it's equals to your client. Pretty much the same code, but we added a parameter. So on and so forth. They keep asking for new, new functionalities, and you end up with a, a quite messy method, which does many things, checks if the amount uh, corresponds to a minimum amount, check if it's negative or positive, maybe check if, if it's a particular client. Uh, that's not a good way to do that. Um, what we will do, oh, I have some tests on it. Um, that's a bare Eclipse. The only thing I added is a plugin called InfiniTest that reruns my test auto automatically. So I got some tests on it. Predicates. I just commented out some of the tests. So they are not passing anymore. That's fine. So I created another version of my service. And what I want to do is replace this whole bunch of parameters by a parameter to represent the condition which is executed in my if block just here, OK? To, to abstract, abstract that functionality to a, a single item. So what I will do, I will change method, method signature just like that. I will remove different parameters I don't need anymore, add a new one. I will, I will call it predicate of type predicate. I will show you what's a predicate exactly. OK, that doesn't compile anymore. That's OK. We just need to remove that part inside of the if and replace that with a predicate.test. That's the only, method, only abstract method which is defined on the type predicate giving it our invoice, okay? So that's not a predicate of type T, but of type invoice. And that's supposed to be all. Oh, excuse me, that's not filter invoices complex, that's just filter invoice, no. And so my test pass. And what I, what I do in my tests, I've created two classes that implement predicate, okay? The first one is a Jenkins predicate. It just checks that my client equals Jenkins. And the second one is a more than predicate. It takes an amount and checks that the amount of the invoice is superior to that amount. And what I do in my tests, up, oops, excuse me, it's just here. I can filter the invoices, giving it as a parameter, both of my parameters, and I use an AND between both. So I can use conjunctions of my predicates. Um, I have a method defined in my predicate, which takes two and does an AND with both the conditions. We got an OR, we got many other methods. Um, these are default methods that's new in Java 8. Um, these are methods that don't depend on context and are always, you, you can always call these ones. A lambda expressions, to, to, to transform an abstract class in a lambda expression, it, it just has to have one, one single abstract method. It doesn't count the default methods, okay? And a predicate, so, takes an invoice, no, in our case, an invoice, so a, a parameter, and return true or false. That's all. So we can do that just, just like that, instantiating some predicate classes, but we can also directly give it a lambda expression, just like I did just here. That's exactly the same. 
Okay. Um, we can do even better with our service. Here we are iterating with a for loop, which is a Java 5 structure. There is a new one on list, on collections. We can do a for each. On invoices, we have a for each method. Okay? You can also uh, define new templates. That's what I did. Here I defined just a for each 8 template. If I call that, uh, it takes my list, applies the for each method, and takes um, a function to apply to each one of my elements. So that's what I did. And here, I can do this one, get this one on the top. And that's exactly the same as a for loop. Okay, I just do a for each, giving it as a parameter a, a function, which is a lambda expression, which takes as a parameter the objects on which we are, we iterate, and which do the work inside just here. That's fine, but we can even do better. There is a new construction in Java 8 called streams. It's defined on every collection. So if I call the method excuse me, invoices stream, I will be able to apply a bunch of method. Here we get a filter method. Okay, that's pretty much what we want to do with our predicate. Here again, uh, Eclipse don't help much. It isn't, it isn't able to convert directly or for loop to a stream dot filter dot map uh, instance. So you can also uh, redefine a template. I just did that. I got a template stream to list that takes a list, convert it to a stream, apply some methods, and return a list. And here you just have to define the method you are, you are interested in. So map, I don't care. I just want to filter. I will give my predicate as a parameter and just get my collectors to list. So if I return that bunch of code instead of the previous one, all, all tests still pass. That's exactly the same. We, tr we, we apply a stream on our list of invoices. We call the filter method. We give it a predicate and we collect uh, our results in a list, okay? Um, in other IDEs, I got IntelliJ ID and NetBeans just here. We show you some things. Oh yeah, perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> so here I have a list and a for loop. If I go just here, I can use a functional operation and it directly transform my for loop to a stream.filter and so on to the typically, it's a, a typical JDK 8 uh, use case. It does that automatically and is able to, to do that on many projects at the same time. Um, that's exactly the same. Um, it's got all, don't care. That's exactly the same in NetBeans. Okay, if I go here, IntelliJ, sorry, <laughs> and replace with a collect, it directly applies stream.filter with the same method, apply a map and a collect and so on. Okay, what I just did manually is Eclipse is automatically done in the other IDEs. That's a way to improve Eclipse. Um, I got another service, which is a user service, and which tried to get the city from a user, the, fact, the billing city from a user. So in my objects, I, just, I have a user, which have some billing information with a getter, and in the billing information, I have an address, and in the address, I got a city, okay? So in my service, when I come a service and I got a null pointer exception, why did that happen? Is it the user? Is it the billing information which are not defined? Or, or this, is this the address? We just don't know. Um, there are two ways to, to, to correct that, that, that thing. <laughs> you can do just that. 
and check at each step if the, the item you are iterating on is null or not. Uh, if it's null, you stop and you return, you return that you didn't find any city for billing. And if, if it's OK, you continue to process. But that's not good in terms of, of cyclomatic complexity. You have nested ifs. That's a bad thing. Oh, you have, you have a second method to do that. <laughs> you check at each step if your, your item is null. And if it's null, you return your result. But here we can see we have five different return statements. And that's also a bad thing to do. Uh, what, what we can do is we can change a little bit our model. The user V8 will have an optional of billing information. Our, billing, our new billing information will get an optional of address. And, and that's all. Our address is still the same. So what we will do in a V8 service, okay, for now it just does nothing. We can, we want to, to work with options. I will show you exactly what it is. It's either an optional dot empty, which is nothing, just like null, or an optional of an item, okay? So here, I will, I, given that the user can be null, I will cast that as an optional. So I, I will use optional dot off nullable, no need for type here. Of user, okay. Okay, that's good. But we try to return a string, and there we are returning an optional of user. That's not at all what we want. Um, there are methods on collections, and you can see optional as a collection of zero, zero or one element, uh, namely a map, a map method which uh, enables you to pass as a parameter a function which will be applied to each and every element of the collection. In our case, if the optional is empty, we just do nothing. If it contains an element, we will apply that method to the element. So if I call map and give it, uh, take my user and I return user get billing information, just like that. I will get an optional of, oh, excuse me. That's strange. Oh, it, it can't handle that. There is another way to write that. It's user v8 dot dot get billing information. That's exactly the same. Okay, that's a method reference. And here, Eclipse doesn't help either. He isn't able to detect such things as uh, one object and you just call a method on that object. The other ID is automatically um, tries to convert it to a method reference with a double comma. Okay, so now I had an optional of user. I must have an optional of billing information. And if I check, no. The, the IDE tells me I've got an optional of optionals of a billing information. So twice an optional wrapper. To avoid that, we can call flat map instead of map. Okay? And that just compresses uh, those two optionals. Okay? So now I got an optional of billing information. I can do the same for to get uh, the but I got a billing information V8 now. I got auto completion. That's a good point for Eclipse. To get the address, okay. So now I've got an optional of address. And if I want, I can apply address dot get city. Mm. Okay, that's fine. Here we are. So now I get an optional of string, which is the city. And I can call another method, which is all else. If, if anywhere in the, the, full, the full treatment, I got the full process, I get uh, an empty 
I will get the else. If I don't have any empty, I will get the value of the city. So if I just do all else no building city, that pretty much does the same thing. So it's more readable, more ex expressive. Uh, we, I don't know if you remember, but we had either five return statements or five uh, if equals null, okay? So here we get, we, we take an optional of user, we get the billing information, we get the address, we get the city, and if there is a, an error in the process, we simply return no billing city, okay? If you get any question at any time, you can ask. Yes? Yes. You should replace your Grava code with 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 Java 8. Yes, of course. But that, th these are quite the same concepts. Yeah. Not really exactly, but quite the same. Yes. Um, so yeah, we'll go to streams. I get a person with a first name, a last name, and an age. Really basic item. Uh, and here I get a service which defines uh, a bunch of persons in a list. Okay. And we have some methods. We want to get the person by age. We want to list first names from a family. We want, we want to sort person by last, first name and last name. We will take care of the first one. I got tests covering that part. Um, we have a map. We iterate on persons. If the map at the key age is empty, we instantiate a new array list to contain future results. And in any case, we add at the given key the person. Okay, pretty basic. Um, instead of the for, we could do a for each. Okay, we get a persons, and we will take, oops, okay. We'll take this bunch of code just here. Okay, we can remove that port. Um, excuse me, that's not person, that's P. And that still works, okay? But it didn't help much. There is another thing on map class, which is interesting. So on map by age, I got a new method, which is called compute if absent. So if the key is not present, we will call the, func the function we will define as a parameter to compute the value. So here, I just say if my get age um, key is not present, I will call a release, excuse me, that new. So that will call new a release each time the key is not defined. And then I just have to add what I add the person. So this line is exactly the same as these four lines. And just delete this one. That's the same. Okay, so we get a map. If the key is absent, we add a new array list, and then we add the person. Okay, that's the same, still working. But we can even do better than that. So we get our persons. As we've seen, we can get a stream on that and collect the results, and there is a collector called grouping by. That's exactly what we want to do. So if I do just that, and we want to group by person.getAge, and I will return that, and that's still pass, okay? So we got our persons. We want to collect them grouping by the age. That's really more readable than the previous version. Um, so, 
Yes? No, excuse me? Uh, no. No, no, no new multimap co concept. But the, the hash maps and hash tables have been completely rewritten and are much more powerful than they were before. Uh, no, there, there is a new parallel, parallel hash map, which is quite interesting, straight safe and so on. But no multimap. Um, well, I will skip the, the, the second method. We we'll just concentrate on this one. So here again, we have a, an abstract class with a single method, a comparator. We can easily convert that to a lambda expression, but it doesn't help much either. What we can do on our result, oh, excuse me, on all persons dot stream, we can sort them, giving them a comparator, and then in the comparator class, you, we get, okay, uh, with an A, it will be better. Ah. We get new methods, comparing, which takes a function. So if you want to compare by person dot, I, th I think it was get first name, we will sort person by first names and we can return them. But that's, we, we wanted to sort by first name and then by last name. So here in my comparator, I got a new default method, up, which is called then comparing, and I can add another sorting criteria. Up. Uh, what am I missing? Maybe a parenthesis. Uh, no. Yes, sure. Okay, that's the same. So we sort, we compare by first name and then last name, and we collect them as a list. Okay, really more, more, and more readable than it was before. Um, uh, a last thing, just to finish, another thing which is missing in Eclipse, according to me, um, you can't extract a part of your, of your code as a parameter for your, f for your function. Uh, IntelliJ ID does two things. It allows you to extract uh, one single statement and it interpolates which, which uh, functional interface responds to that contract. Uh, if I do that just here, it will pro propose me consumer, that's system.out.println, is just a consumer. It takes nothing and produces something. Uh, it could also be a function, but with void as a parameter. So here, if we transform that to a consumer, it will be added as a parameter to my method and just call the only the single method de defined on that class, on that, on that expression, okay? But we, there is, yes? And there is also another thing. Here, in my filter, I give it a predicate, okay? That's a basic case, but if I want to extract it, uh, don't always remember, I can choose the name. Maybe I can call that predicate, and it will be a parameter of my method directly, okay? These things, according to me, are really missing in Eclipse right now. And I hope some people will find a way to introduce them uh, sooner or later. Um, just to show you uh, something in the preferences, the template I've just added. These are just basic templates, but I don't know if you already defined some. Um, Okay, here they are. Just as an example, this one I define. Uh, iterable uh, will be any collection. Um, the for each, uh, you, you'll have your, each one of your elements, and the cursor will be where your cursor goes uh, once you've defined uh, the two first variables in your template. Uh, I encourage you to, to create new ones and 
uh, help sh share them to improve uh, even even to improve Eclipse. Do you have any question on the on the whole subje subject? Don't be shy. Oh, you can't have any checked expression in a, in a lambda expression. You can't have any. Yes, I would agree. Ah, you can either use runtime exceptions. That's so, uh, one one way to do that, and there are <laughs> monads <laughs> to to define uh, to other way to handle the exceptions as uh, checked ex exceptions. So. I don't use checked exception really often anymore. Sometimes you have to. <laughs> yeah. I wrap them in, inside, my, inside my lambda and then throw a runtime exception if I really need one. But uh, no. Mm. There are some preconditions. Um, I, I've shown you some things. Uh, Lambda Ficator is the name of the project behind NetBeans, which automatically converts uh, Lambda expressions and and um, oh, and streams for, for for loops to streams. Um, there are preconditions, so you you just have to have a Java util collection. You can't use an array. Um, you. You can't have any checked exception. You must have non-local, not non-effectively final variables. So you can reaffect a, vari a, vari a variable, an outside scope variable inside your lambda expression. You can't have any break statement <laughs> in it. Uh, there are m many, many preconditions. And there, there is a, a link just here if you are interested. If you want to implement that kind of thing in Eclipse, uh, there is some research papers and so on. So thank you. I will be present during the whole conference if you have any questions or want to talk about uh, other local user groups or whatever. Just come. Thank you. Thank you.